So, obviously, I'm a bit injured. Not anything uh, life-threatening, but still quite annoying. So, fortunate for me, we already had a guest lined up. Chris Kumar from Style and Strings. You've seen his work in Inside Lacrosse Magazine, U.S. Lacrosse Magazine, all over the internet. Uh, he's going into the Hall of Fame for some sticks he died for the women's lacrosse team, the gold medal winners. Congratulations, ladies. So, he's going to come in, he's going to spruce up that stick we did last week and show you guys how to do a real simple two color pin glue dye. Now this kit could have showed you anything in the realm of dyeing, but you gotta start small, you gotta start at the bottom and work your way up. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass along to my buddy Chris Kumar. Hey guys, what's going on? As Justin said, my name is Chris Kumar and I'm the dye guy at Style and Strings. Um, I've been with their company for about eight years now. And it really helped me uh, perfect a lot of my skills. For what we did on the show last week, Justin showed you guys how to do a simple one color dye job as we did on this Haro H2 here. I just want to start really simple and show you guys the basic concepts of doing a hot glue splatter dye. Do a tie dye technique, you can do a fade, there's a lot of ways you can do it. Start off simple and get up to more complex stuff as I have seen featured in US Lacrosse magazines. Um, but to really understand all the complexity of this, we really do need to start simple. Alright guys, we're all set up here. Um, I have the head we're going to dye, the ROH2, it's already golden yellow. We're going to put some glue on it and then get it black. Um, I have a couple things for this simple dye job. All we're really going to need is whatever works best. Old newspaper, an empty pizza box, an empty you know, shipping box. Something that will fit the head fairly well that some excess glue can drip off and fall into. Um, I got my glue gun preheated, I have a multi-temp. I always preheat it on high and then switch it to low so the glue doesn't get too hot while you're working with it. Um, this glue is very hot and it will burn you. If it ever comes in contact with your skin, find a sink and rinse your hands instantly in cold water. Alright y'all, I'm going to do a little bit of commentary for Kumar while he gets this stick ready for you. Now, I want you guys to notice his technique. When he applies the glue, he actually starts pulling the trigger before it's over the head and doesn't stop until it's past the other side. This creates the effect that the glue came out of nowhere, making it look sort of like a tie-dye effect which he had explained earlier. Furthermore, you can see him chronically flipping the stick over, making sure he gets every last bit. Now remember, you're layering things, so whatever's colored in glue is going to come out in golden yellow, or whatever color you happen to have on the bottom. So, in this process, we're going to attempt to make this look faded, as in it becomes more and more condensed with yellow towards the bottom of the stick. In order to do this, you simply put the glue closer together, leaving less area for the black dye to reach the plastic. You'll see the end result once we peel off all the glue, but it's important to mention that you need to think about what you want your stick to look like before you start. Where you lay the glue is going to keep the color that's originally there. Now you see the glue gets closer and closer towards the bottom of the stick. You'll see the effect later. You're going to need to think about this when you choose to dye your own head. You don't have to do a fade, but you do want to know how much of the base color you want. Now we've already showed you how to dye a stick, so if you need any tips or tricks on that, just revisit last week's tutorial. After this montage, I'm going to go ahead and get my hands a little bit dirty, so I'll see you in a minute. Now that Kumar's done with all the fun stuff with fire and the boiling water, I get the monotonous task of ripping off all the glue that he put on. So, I would suggest you use a pair of bent needle nose pliers. If you don't have those, regular pliers will do, but these are a little bit more malleable and they'll stop you from scratching up your stick. Now, let's take this thing over to the desk and I'll show you a quick process. It's really not that difficult, really not too much to explain. But when you're done with this, you're done with the head. 
Now, like I promised, there's really nothing to this. Just grab your pliers and start ripping off the glue. The more surface area you can grab with glue on it, it'll better your chances of actually pulling it off. Now, this stuff can be a little bit stingy, and sometimes it doesn't want to come off. If that happens, just throw it in the freezer for a good hour or two, pull it out, and see if that helps. Other than that, it's just a tedious, long process. Hey, y'all. I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of the E-Lacrosse Question of the Week. I am your host, Justin Skaggs. I want to give a special thank you to Chris Kumar and all of our sponsors, and of course, all of you guys for watching. Have a good day. Keep watching.